Hey friends, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thanks for stopping by the channel. Now I've got a super simple pattern for you today. This one's called the Little Brown Stone. Now this is the 12th, and the last one I'm gonna be tying from Dave Hughes' Essential Series. Now it's not the last fly I wanna tie out of all Dave Hughes' books, but I've got a lot of other series I wanna be getting to. So this one, I found it in his American Fly Tying Manual from 1986, uh, but I also found it in his Essential Trout Flies. Now it was slightly different in the Essential Trout Flies. It had a small red tail on it. Now, what about the history of this fly? There isn't really any history to it. I mean, it's a little brown stone fly. It's one of those patterns that has probably been invented or created by hundreds of people through the years, and you just name it exactly what it is. It's a stone fly, it's little, and it's brown. Now, one interesting note before we tie this, if you live in the Mid-Atlantic or Northeast, this is quite possibly the first major hatch you will encounter in your waters. Now again, it's a super easy pattern to tie, can be really effective. I think you'll like it. Let's give it a shot. So there you go. That's it in the vise. Told you not too much to it, not too fancy. Now the sizes for this guy are 12 or 14. You really don't want to go any smaller than that. I'm tying this on a size 12. It's a 1x long dry fly hook. And I'm going to lay down a base of brown thread in 70 denier. Now I'm gonna leave a couple of inches of the tag, so I pulled a little bit extra out. That's gonna be our rib. So take this down to the start of the bend. Okay, that's gonna be fine. I'm gonna leave this tag hanging out right there. Now let's take some old cock pheasant tail. You can take a, this is one of my scraggly feathers here, because we're just using the smallest bit of tips. So four or five of the fibers, see that right there? And probably not even a hook gap, so just a little sliver right there. I'm gonna catch this in with maybe two wraps, and then take a look at it. Watch your, watch your rib, your extra thread there, so you don't mangle any of them up too much. And I've got one of them going underneath. So let's see if we can pull that out. Okay, we did, and then just get it positioned right there. So that happens. Okay, now our, our tail is looking okay. I'm gonna take an extra wrap or two right here just to get those really locked in. Now let's snip off this excess. You can bury that if you want or just not really worry about it. Take your thread up a little bit in front of the body and let's put some wax on it. And the dubbing on this guy is brown synthetic. I'm using a super fine, but use whatever you've got. It's not gonna take much. Probably, I don't know, maybe not even a three inch noodle. You can put it on pretty tight and you can, it's really your preference to how, how thick you want this body to be. We are gonna wrap that thread up there as a, a rib. So I'm gonna leave it off just a couple of millimeters of thread right there. Now I can use that to get me back to the start of the tail, or the front of the tail, the start of the body. So I think that's gonna look fine right there. Now I like my stoneflies to have pretty thin bodies. I just watched Jim Masura tie one and he had a pretty thick body on his but up to you for your preference, and, and I suppose what, what the stoneflies actually look like in your waters. The ones here in Mid-Atlantic and Maryland have generally been pretty thin, pretty skinny. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more dubbing right here because I didn't have enough to get me all the way up. Let's see if that's gonna be enough right there. I think that will work right there. Okay. Now, let's wrap the rib. Counter wrap it if you want. Just watch those tail feathers. I'm not going to. I'm just going to wrap it the same way I did the, the, the dubbing there. It's just going to give it a little bit of segmentation. And to us, brown rib on brown dubbing, it's not really going to show up too much. But you'd be surprised that what the fish can see when it comes to this. 
So evenly spaced wraps just all the way up. Now catch it in at the top, or not the top, at the front. Just a couple of wraps right there. So we really can't even see that segmentation, but if you looked at it with a UV light or a different spectrum that the fish see, it would probably be visible. Okay, now let's do the tail. The, or not the tail, the wing. It's one of the coolest things about this fly. Just one little slip of grizzly. Almost reminds me of a sheep fly, but it's not, it's a brown stone fly. So I'm just going to cut that off. And you want the tail, maybe half, or the wing, sorry, halfway down the tail. And lay it flat if you want, or lay it upright almost like a mini streamer here. So I think that's the length we want right there. I'm going to catch this in with a couple of wraps right here. And I'm going to like that one just fine. Let's go ahead and snip this butt end off right here. And now that same hackle feather I had, I'm going to use that to wrap the front hackle. See, it's kind of thick right, right here, right above the eye, see that? And then it gets thin pretty quickly. How you want to measure this, you could use your, you know, hackle gauge if you want, but I will just put it down right there. That's going to be a little bit longer than I want, so I will pull it down until the, I get the length, which is about maybe right there. So that's where I'm going to tie this feather in. I will just strip it off, give me some bare stem right here. Now that's my tie-in point. I'm going to tie it in with the concave side toward the hook. A little bit upright right there. We'll just help that first wrap. Two or three good locking wraps to get that in. Now I've got a little stub here I'm going to go ahead and trim. And leave your thread where you want to end this hackle. Now take your hackle pliers if you need to. I could probably get away without, so I'm going to try to do it without. But you want it fairly bushy. This is the only thing making this fly float, is this front hackle. So while it's not a Smoky Mountain fly, it is still a pretty, pretty bushy front hackle, and it just needs to be. So I'm not counting. That's at least five wraps right there. Let's try six. Okay, now take a look at it. I think that's gonna float pretty well right there. Two wraps to catch this off. And yeah, I think we're gonna be fine. Let's reach in here and snip this as close as we can get it. And let's clean up this head. Don't have to pull it back too much, just a little bit to get me, you know, a flat enough area point of the hook is getting into my thumbs, my thumb, my one thumb. So I'm gonna put about four wraps right there, just slightly pushing that hackle back. And it gives me a little area there for my whip finish. A three or four turn would probably suffice because we're gonna put a drop of head cement on it. Uh oh, okay. I think that's going to be good right there. And if we need any cleanup, I've got some thread. My thread started to split on me a little bit right there, so I've got a crazy fiber coming down somewhere. And we'll take care of this little guy right there. And a drop of head cement and a little brown stone is done. So a great pattern here in the Mid-Atlantic, Northeast, one of the earliest hatches around. So that's all, my friends. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.